Guys, uh, today's video is on the topic of ship construction and particularly I'll be talking about uh, the stiffening of ship's plates. Uh, so let's start with what is stiffening of ship's plates and why is it required? Now a ship during its journey experiences a lot of uh, stresses and forces on its uh, structure. So when we talk about stresses and forces, we could be talking about shearing forces and bending moments. And in terms of stresses, we could be talking about panting stresses, pounding stresses, diagonal loads, vibration stresses, uh, stresses that develop due to dry docking loads. So uh, multiple stresses. So to that regards, and to prevent the ship's plate areas uh, from distorting or uh, uh, going out of shape, under the influence of these uh, shearing forces and bending moments and loads and local loads, they have to be stiffened. They have to be strengthened. All right, so uh, when we talk about ship's plates, uh, we are talking about uh, the shells, the decks, the bulkheads, the tank tops, the panels. So all that is included when we talk about ship's plates. So we have to make sure they are strengthened, they are compressed and uh, so that they can absorb these forces and they do not get distorted, which will lead to constructional failures uh, of ships and that could lead to major accidents at sea and uh, loss of uh, life uh, and cargo as well as well as the ship all right so we'll start uh, by talking about the general shell plating first uh, shell plating uh, has a, a primary task of keeping the seawater outside the ship all right uh, so on the outside of the shell there is water and on the inside of the shell plating, there could be um, water, uh, like ballast water, there could be fuel, there could be liquid cargo, like oil, um, or there could be, it could be just empty, it could have air inside it, all right? So because of this, there's a difference in the pressure outside the shell plating compared to inside. Uh, and the shell plating has to withstand the difference in pressure, which results in some sort of, uh, some sort of bending forces. So pressure at the shell from outside depends on the draft of the water, of course, and varies with the water depth. So you can see here, I have tried to show you in the diagram how the distribution of the pressure forces around the shell plating takes place due to the differing water strength of the water outside, the, the pressure that the water exerts on the shape of the hull and depends on the shape of the hull as well. So this is just an example showing you how the difference in pressure uh, with the shell plating inside and the, what is outside the shell plating creates those forces which results in the experiencing of forces by the shell plate. If we talk about decks, then uh, the weather decks uh, may deflect under the load of uh, water on deck or ice secretion or deck cargo uh, or stores or any other thing that are carried on the deck that puts a load on the deck. The twin deck may uh, deflect under the weight of the cargo on the deck and especially forward by the apparent increase of weight due to pitching, pounding and those kind of ship's movements. Also when the ship is rolling, it may also have an influence on the decks or the deck platings. Uh, we talk about bulkheads. Bulkheads have to withstand bending forces when they are uh, the boundary of a tank or a hold with a bulk cargo so those kind of that that cargo or a tank uh, the liquid in the tank or it exerts a force on the bulkheads so when the contents of the liquid or the bulk cargo which is in tons of course is different in height on either side of the bulkhead this results in a pressure difference and this causes the bending of the bulkhead all right because the bulkhead forms the boundary between could be could be the boundary between two cargo holes or two tanks and on either side of the tank there is not equal uh, water or liquid or fuel or bulk cargo and because of the differing levels differing uh, amounts there is a difference in pressure which is absorbed by the bulkhead so at sea because of the ship's movement and the resulting sloshing effect of the liquids these forces are multiplied they increase in strength so for the strength calculation of this kind of bulkhead it is assumed that one side is empty while the other side is filled with liquid to the height of the overflow pipe on deck. So when a bulkhead also has to function as a support of heavy deck constructions, they, there, there are other compression forces there as well. All right. So bulkheads fitted against torsion of the hull have to be stiffened, keeping diagonal forces in mind. 
then we can talk about the tank top the tank top uh, the is the closing plate of the double bottom and and can be under pressure from below uh, from the liquids or when we talk about liquids it could be ballast water it could be oil cargo uh, and it could also have pressure from the cargo resting on it and this is in case of dry cargo ships of course so pressure from underneath is caused by liquid in the double bottom tank such as ballast water and the height of the overflow air pipes which allow the liquid to fill in the pipe or even to overflow so that is what uh, is shown on the right side of your screen so the height of the liquid column causes pressure on the tank top and this is what is shown on the screen as well all right so the location of the tank top is on the left side you can see how the what is tank top actually if you are not very familiar with what is tank top which is it's like the top the, the closing plate of the double bottom tank it's called the tank top all right so of course sometimes the, there is cargo resting on it as well um, because it could be the tank top could be the bottom of the cargo hold so th there could be tons of cargo resting on it and then water putting pressure on it from below as well and as well as the airflow pipe that is going it it puts pressure on the tank top as well all right of course depends on the construction the type of ship uh, then uh, the panel when we talk about the ship's panels the water pressure actually results in forces on the plating which is so large that they cannot be absorbed by the plate without deformation or even fracturing so the plates have to be stiffened by stiffening profiles so a combination of plates with stiffeners is actually called a panel and that is what is shown on your screen here you can see there is a combination of plates and they all have stiffeners you can see the stiffeners are placed alongside at at equal lengths so by adding the stiffeners the panel is divided in streaks what we known as the streaks uh, with the width of the stiffener spacing so you can see the 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 stiffeners are spaced equally apart and uh, when you add the stiffeners the panel starts to get divided in streaks so you must have heard about the garboard streak shear streak so that's how it is uh, the streaks are formed so the load on that area is transferred to the stiffener which in itself has gained in strength due to the fact that it is welded to the plate so what happens is the plate then doesn't absorb the pressure it's the stiffener that takes the load so the stiffener has been strengthened because it's been welded to the plate so part of it uh, the part of the load the part of the pressure experienced by the panel is now taken up by the stiffener so the thickness of the plating is determined by the stiffener spacing in bulkheads therefore the lower plates are thicker than the upper plates and classification gives uh, regulations for the maximum spacing of stiffeners depending on their function so it's the classification society that will also provide with uh, specifications regarding spacing between stiffeners maximum spacing between stiffeners so each stiffener takes its part of the total force working on a panel the magnitude of the force is related to the pressure on the panel the spacing of the stiffeners and the unsupported length of the stiffener so in the drawing that you see on your screen a panel is shown where the part supported by the middle stiffener uh, has been indicated so to determine the dimension of the stiffener the width of the plate carried by the stiffener is taken uh, for a certain percentage into the calculation of the uh, section modules so the section modules actually comprises of stiffeners plus the plate so the effective part of the plate and then is called as the contributing plate so when the unsupported length of a stiffener is so long that this is uh, resulting in very heavy stiffeners the stiffeners themselves are getting support from even heavier stiffeners uh, which are called stringers or web frames so what you see here on your screen is uh, showing various panels with their specific stiffeners and supporting webs so you can see that uh, when we talk about the planes we are talking about the shells bulkheads decks flat bottom tank tops and you can see the stiffening and the support members are mentioned there so the the spacing of horizontal webs uh, the stringers increases from small spacing at the bottom to a large spacing at the top of the bulkhead in connection with the triangular liquid pressure on the bulkhead all right so you can then use the same vertical profile section over the full height of the bulkhead so stiffeners can be chosen from a range of types uh, most used are flat bars inverted angle bars and what we known as holland profiles or bulb flat these are hot rolled sections uh, they can uh, the web frames and stringers can be made of uh, similar profiles 
but this is impracticable. Uh, normally these beams are constructed from plate with a flange or with a face bar as I will show you what a face bar looks like. So similar stiffeners have names in connection with the type of the panel that they are supporting. So I think I'll leave the video here now otherwise it will become too long. What I'll uh, do is in the next video I'll show you uh, different types of ships with uh, or photographs of different types of ships with uh, some with transverse framing some with longitudinal framing uh, so that you get an idea of how the stiffening system the longitudinal stiffening system and the transverse stiffening system provide or add to the strength of the ship's structure to be able to absorb the forces and the stresses that it experiences due to various uh, reasons uh, I'll also try to make a video on the stresses that a ship experiences, uh, such as panting stresses, pounding stress. I'll talk about that as well. Uh, these uh, these are very useful uh, when you go for uh, as a chief mate or as a deck officer when you go for dry docking. You understand these things, and then you can look at the dry dock uh, and you understand more of this. So you can put the theory into practice. Also very helpful for your orals part of it especially when you go for a chief mates or a master's orals all right i leave it here and all the best with your studies guys good luck